In this example, we have a parallel plate capacitor of the plates in the shape of square and, si and the sides L. And what we do is we slide a dielectric material from the left side, a distance x, into the between the plates, into the region uh, between the plates. And we keep the distance between the plates D as fixed. And uh, you can uh, also uh, assume that the thickness of the dielectric material, material in this direction is D. So the first question is, when you slide this dielectric into the uh, uh, capacitor, how the capacitance of this parallel plate will change? Well, <coughs> for this, uh, just fix this distance x and then try to find an equivalent capacitor of this configuration. Well, we already uh, have solved a similar question that we can always divide this capacitor into uh, two different capacit capacitances. One is filled with a dielectric material which has the same uh, thickness between the plates D and the other is uh, a capacitor which has, a, which has no any uh, dielectric between the plates. If uh, this side the lateral side of the dielectric is X, then on one hand we have a capacitor uh, which has a side of X in this direction and L in the uh, uh, normal direction as the uh, uh, rectangular plates of the capacitor and it is all filled with this dielectric material K. And in that case uh, the first capacitor will have the surface area x times L. The second capacitor will be parallelly connected to this one because the plates, when you divide the plates into two, then you, con you have to connect these plates by a wire in order to keep the plates at constant potential, at the same potential. Okay? Because when we divide these plates, you need to keep these plates at the same potential. So that's why this configuration is equivalent to two parallelly connected capacitors. And the second capacitor will have one side L minus X and the other side L. So the uh, surface area is L times L minus X. But this capacitor has no any dielectric between the plates. So the new capacitance, of course, will be the sum of these capacitors, and we may now easily express the capacitances of these capacitors. The first one, since it has a dielectric K, it will be A0, epsilon 0 times A1, which is the surface area of the plate of the capacitor C1, divided by D, and the distance between the plates is all the same for all capacitors, for both capacitors, and the second capacitance is has no dielectric than epsilon zero a two divided by d. So if you express these surface areas in terms of the sides l and x, then we have the final expression for the equivalent capacitor. So this is the final expression for the capacitance, which has a partially filled uh, dielectric. The epsilon zero divided by d l square plus l x k minus one. Now, if we keep the potential difference between the plates fixed, or if you uh, connect this uh, capacitor, which is partially filled by dielectric, to a battery, uh, connecting the capacitor to a battery means fixing the potential difference between the plates. Okay. Uh, we can express the total energy of this uh, partially filled capacitance, partially filled with uh, dielectrics, as 1 over 2 C V square. Uh, well, V is constant in here because it is connected to a battery, and C we already get from the previous uh, uh, work. 
and we can express this uh, energy stored in this capacitor in, in this configuration uh, as you see it is uh, dependent on uh, X where X is the uh, uh, the sliding distance of the dielectric into the uh, between the plates of the capacitor so next question is when we change this X we know now how the energy stored in the capacitor changes right well we have in a pot we have a potential expression and it depends on a position of some kind of position right it's a function of position. But we know, uh, again, that all the forces um, related to the system of capacitor is uh, electrostatic in nature. And we know that the electrostatic forces are conservative forces. That means if we find the energy of the system in terms of some distance, then we, when we take the uh, position derivative of the energy or potential energy, we get the force that, that is involved in sliding this dielectric between the plates. Okay? Now imagine we want to uh, try to slide this dielectric uh, in the direction of, let's say, this axis is the uh, positive x direction, in the direction of uh, positive x axis, positive x direction, then the question is, uh, what uh, force do we need to slide this uh, dielectric into or between the plates? Or will the system will pu uh, pull this dielectric into into the uh, region. Okay, let's check this. And we know that the force is just the derivative of this potential with respect to x. Uh, of course, uh, it is there is a minus sign in the uh, definition, so the force as a vector is equal to minus du or dx in the uh, x direction. Okay, so let's calculate this whether we have uh, if we have whether we we must provide the force or the capacitor is pulling the dielectric uh, into itself. So let's uh, do this and when you calculate this derivative it's easy because it's linearly dependent on x. We get this expression minus epsilon 0 v squared divided by 2d l times k minus 1. So this expression, these terms are always positive. Epsilon 0 d and v square l and k is larger than v because larger than one because it's a dielectric. So this expression is always plus, and we have a minus sign here. So the force you see you see is in the negative x direction. It's minus uh, the unit uh, vector in the x direction. So the force is to the left. That means when you try to push this uh, dielectric into the region. Uh, the capacitor will push it back. So you have to provide a force to uh, slide this dielectric material between the plates. Okay.